This is green. Nice, isn't it? It's very fluorescent. And this is yellow. Also very nice. It's a color. What do we know about colors? We generalize them. We think about them and we know them when we see them. We, we say, hey, that's green. And we say, hey, that's yellow. But what do we really know about them? They are colors on a spectrum. It's their purely qualitative means of talking about something that's very quantitative. It, it's, it's how we generalize our world. It's how we experience our world. We have to learn something about a, a quantitative world and somehow represent it qualitatively. Now I want you to think, at what point does green become yellow? That was so subtle. Where does, it, where does one stop and where does the other begin? That leads me into the idea of representations. Now, would you believe me if I told you that one of the greens that I showed you before was actually that green? It's a different green. They were fundamentally different values that I showed to you, and yet you still thought of it as green. I still said, hey, this is green. It's going to transition to yellow. Hello, green. But it wasn't the same green. It was light green. It was some variation of green, but yet it was still green, right? It's, so it's difficult to talk about green as purely green. So that's what we do. We represent things by the commonness of them. We, we look at a chair and say, OK, four legs, a seat, something. What's common about them? We, we use cognitive processing, and then we think about it's something that we can sit on. It, it has four legs, and it has a seat. That's how we look at our world, and that's how we appreciate things. Now, um, this, is, this gets into the idea of representation as being the experience. We do experience things in representations. We do experience green. We look at green and we say, that's green. We look at yellow and say, that's yellow. But they're not green. They're not yellow. There's nothing in the universe that is suddenly attaching the value of green to it. That's just how we interpret it. So representations may <coughs> be the same as how we experience things, but they're not the same as reality. And it is with that that I would like to introduce the idea of sleep. Uh, starting off with a personal uh, uh, endeavor into why I'm interested <coughs> in sleep. To be here this morning, I didn't sleep last night. To guarantee that I could definitely be here, to definitely get to wake up. You know, Rachel said, oh, you should, might want to set an extra alarm. No, I just didn't go to sleep. You know why? Because <laughs> I, I sometimes don't get up. Sometimes I dream that I am here at TEDx and that I'm giving this talk and then suddenly I'll wake up and I'll still be in my bed. But I will have imagined that it was actually there, that I was doing it and therefore I will sleep through my alarm. Or I will learn to hit my alarm and then I'll hit the next one. And then I'll hit the next one and I won't even remember it, I won't even think about it. That's because we even learn during sleep. And that's what really fascinates me, that we learn during sleep. We, 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 are cu we aren't aware of it and yet we learn. Now, I mean, that's totally a, a cognitive something that we do while we're awake, right? But then we do it when we're asleep. So it's now you get this idea of where does sleep end and where does um, wakeness, wakefulness start? I love this quote. I'm just going to say it. Sleep is a topic on which almost everyone considers himself an authority because of personal interest and firsthand experience. So how do we experience sleep? We experience sleep, I'm asleep. And now I'm awake. Okay, now I can go about my day and do stuff. And now I'm asleep. So we, we sort of oscillate between the two. You're asleep and you're awake. So that's how we characterize them. We, we look for the commonalities in them and we say, okay, that's how I'm going to look at sleep and that's how I'm going to look at wakefulness and I'm going to flip a coin, I'm going to be on one or the other. That's how we experience it. But that isn't how it is in reality. Like I said, representations, how we view the world are how we experience the world, but it's not how the world really is. Now, these... Don't look at it. Just understand that sleep has its own qualities. They're in green. Wakefulness has its qualities, and it, they're in yellow. Now, there's a, there, like I said before, there's, you can actually learn during sleep. You can, there was a study that uh, they, they played a noise. It, it would start off small. 
Ooh, and then it would increase. Ooh, and then it would increase. Ooh, and the, the patient would have to breathe deeply in order to stop it. And they did this during their sleep. So it would, it would play, and then the patient would breathe deeply while they were in REM sleep, while they were in non-REM sleep, while they were in deep sleep. They would breathe, and they would learn to stop the noise. This happened 95% of the time in deep sleep, when you can't shake your toddler awake because he is so engrossed in his dream. During that time, a person can learn. A person can be aware of his surroundings and learn from them. So it turns out that through all of these various ways that we look at sleep, we're able to rule out some of those aspects. So there was the green, there was the yellow, there was the sleep, there was the awake. What are we left with? Well, we take that out, we take that out, we take that out, we move that over, we move that over, we take that out, and we take that out, we move that one over, take that out, and what are we left with? Whoop, I skipped. We're left with this. There are three wakefulness. There are three yellows on the side of sleep. <coughs> there are more qualities that can be indicative of sleep that are actually qualities that we would attribute to wakefulness. Things that we call EEGs, the, the, the ways that our brain um, shows electrical activity. Sometimes it can be noise-like. Our brain during REM sleep looks exactly the same as it does during the wake. If you looked at someone, just looked on their EEG, you would have no clue whether or not they were, they were dreaming or whether or not they were awake. Rational visual thinking and cognition. We dream. Lucid dreaming. I'm sure people are familiar with lucid dreaming. You, you, you can, you're, almost, you're almost in control of your reality. Some people have learned to train themselves to be, to be in lucid dreaming. I do lucid dream. I am a person who exists in that middle. I'm a person who, you know, just I'm conscious of my surroundings even while I'm asleep. So, so there's that too. We are learning and responding to stimuli. That's normally something that we would think you would have to be present for, you know. But no, nope. that can happen in sleep. So where does sleep stop and where does wakefulness start? That's the idea. So let's, go, let's take it back to the color idea. So you're going from green up to yellow. And where does it stop? Where, if I said sleep, what if I just moved you one echelon up? You know, like I said before, that's green, but it actually wasn't green. So what if I said, oh, you're in sleep, but it was actually a step higher than sleep? And then a step higher than that, where does pure sleep become lucid dreaming? Where does pure sleep become somnambulism? Where does pure sleep become some sort of psychological disorder, like um, schizophrenia? Schizophrenia might be um, characterized as a sort of live dreaming. You're imagining things. You're imagining things that don't exist, much like you would in your dream, but physiologically, you're awake. That's the idea here. And uh, I'd like to end with um, the idea, well, uh, I was introduced in um, saying that uh, I'm a part of a sleep lab. Yes, that's very true. Um, we're actually starting this week uh, sending out um, um, these devices with, uh, with people. And we're going to be looking at it over the summer. It's going to be very interesting. But what we're doing is long-term evaluation. Long-term, how do people sleep? And what is the, what is the, is there some way to characterize sleep? Is there some way to say, this is a person, how they look during sleep? Because sleep varies a lot. And as I've said, sleep, you have no idea how, what it is when you look at it, and you can't really tell. So uh, hopefully, you'll find something more about sleep, and I want you to think about whether or not you're actually sleeping or awake. Thank you. <laughs>